It doesn't really matter. And I do apologize for the surveillance. Wild Pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, will there be an official investigation? I assume you discovered there is an operation. The lieutenant is about to interject. Cut him off. This decision should be yours. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand. Of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. The words bloodbath sound cold in her mouth. They taste of iron and strawberries. I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. Every worker... A member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric or a joke. They did not appreciate the humor. Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. Who are they, exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. So what happened? The story is one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders, for now. It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. It will be all of them. The decision is already made. It was the Union who strung him from that tree. My hope is that you provide a single concrete suspect before Cronell indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put, if you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. They would have to, to project strength and power. The Debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Have you ever seen a Hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. As I said, a bloodbath. Too many things have already gone wrong. Nameless, badgeless, detective of the citizens' militia. All we can do is keep that which is not from following suit. One single, concrete suspect delivered into civil court. 
and I may be able to defuse this situation. Yes, I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing them, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. Down a deep black well. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchmann Lorenz, Eendracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, escort missions and such. Meaning they are used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I'd be dealing with a group like Crenell. I have. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. The lieutenant consults his notebook. His eyebrows knitted in concentration. Oh, we haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics, too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor about a rumor. In any case, it's what the Colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes, but I did not know him. Lely his service name, a nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. One is a man, Corti, they call him, a nickname as well. The other a woman, Phyllis de Paul. Corti is the gunner, I believe. De Paul is a radio operator. What would you say was his eye color, the deceased's? She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. That's all right, ma'am. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age, or gauge his facial expressions. Indeed, this matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mixed accent, Oranese, or Messinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. 
for one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes, ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. Vigilantes. You're a professional officer of the only legitimate authority in Rivershaw. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. One is obviously the scab leader at the harbor gates. The one chanting the idiotic slogans, he's barely maintaining his disguise. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the lorry drivers. That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. Does this not bother you? Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. That would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. I hope I can answer it better. Until the executions start? Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. Five days, not more. Maybe sooner. It's a matter of days, not weeks. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. For about half a minute in silence. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Close. Port cities. This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the Dolorean century. Over 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? The times have changed. Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital. 
traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Pretto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Pretto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semnes Islands, then this. Revachol. Those are the two constants. Redefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the inter age. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Somewhere in an office lit by a single green desk lamp, Captain Ptolemyus Price, 58, bald and bespeckled, is writing in a ledger on his desk. Rows and rows of days and weeks, laconic remarks in a single column. Patrol, case, vacation, injured. In Martinez, looking into Crenel, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways, just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into on the Occident. Mercenary tattoos. His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Challenge accepted. I say we do it. Do what you have to do, detective. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. We will be careful, then. Is there anything else I can help you with? You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally. Time to choose sides. Of course, Detective. Excuse me for implying otherwise. The RCM does not pick sides in this. I hope it doesn't come off any other way. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not... Curious to hear another person's take. It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Tell her she'll like you for it. Yes, your disgusting necktie agrees completely. Let's gossip. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Wow, so someone's been a little boring. Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My Lord's Cobble type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out to Telefax.
good, good. Of course, to outright declare yourself something does seem a bit too interesting now, doesn't it? The janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole. Like I said before, I don't know much about this weasel, but the bossman said he's a real piece of work. Thanks for helping out, friend. Mr. Dubois, every worker. So be it. How can I help you today? Let's hear it, Harry. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you, because it's not a real RCM folder. 
It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? There is no way to sway this man in any direction. He is unsuggestible and unswayable. Just tell the truth. The weasel is no true patriot, Harry. He prays every night for the downfall of the Union and spits upon the name of the King. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is gonna start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is gonna be good. Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment. You guys are just light years ahead of me. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organization. I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best, helping people with the power of politics. Yes, yes. Do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. Believe me, Harry, he's a nobody. Just your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high caliber case like this. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are neat freaks. If you don't mind me saying so, I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? That's not how you pattern someone. The technique is way off. You strike with your whole body, not just the pattern. Oh, Harry, thanks for the tip. I'll leave doing the real damage to you. You are the real police officer after all, not me. That's all he's going to say on this subject. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines, sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa, you name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. About my fun container, it's a hoot, Harry. Who knows? Maybe you'll be in here the next time they move it. It'll be very fun, I promise. But enough about me and my container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them. All hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal. 
getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. There's a militant wing inside the Union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. They're like you guys, idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Of course, you're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. By all means, Harry, what's on your mind? Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martin A's and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them, but don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. But of course, it's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. You can now go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. Needless to say, this is another move. Don't take it. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you, just holding it out there. But I'm willing to share information. Was there anything else? Was it a good talk? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martinez, 
And of course, I also want you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. saying it, but I don't believe you. You know how it is, company snitches, agent provocateurs everywhere. I'm barricaded in this fortress of mine, and I need to get a message out. Will you help me? And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth centre in Martin Ames. It will be righteous. We're gonna get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. Roller skating, not drugs, Harry. You like this. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. Water drips from the eaves. A woman looks at her freshly tarred skiff. There's a pair of cavalry boots under the fish in the box, and the wind howls like a vicious spirit. They are just gonna have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth centre, designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. But, he thinks, it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm gonna hand you the keys to Martin Ames, and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I heard there was some trouble with the water lock, but it should be fixed now. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I'll know you're a solid socialist. Yes, yes. My best men are tracking it down. Some kids saw some other kids running away with it. Some folks said a paranoid schizophrenic might have it. Leads are being checked, Harry. What's that, Harry? You're getting a little pale. Is it the words paranoid schizophrenic and lost gun in one sentence? Don't worry, it's just a lead. It'll probably turn out to be nothing. Most certainly, Harry. Nuff by all means, Harry. What's on your mind? What? Oh, how could I forget your little side project? Well done, Harry. Well done. Don't even tell me what it was. But good job. I love it when workers take the initiative like this. So do I. That's one tasty brew. You should drink some right now, if you can. See you soon, Debarder. Just kidding, but not too much. Hey. Psst. Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. You keep saying things like down with the bourgeoisie, 
Eat the rich. Sodomize the landowners. Impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pockets. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Okay, not in so many words, but don't deny it. You're about to rip off that mask of social democracy and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that will devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... I've got nothing to say to you. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. What's gonna happen if we don't? You gonna go and tell on us? You gonna let him talk to me like that, Titus? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am, you big pussy. The old man sent word you'd be around again. That's the reason I'm being so forthcoming with you. Don't wear it out. Again, just get the dead guy's autograph, since you're his biggest fan. 
Good. About fucking time. Like hell, you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in precinct 41 kilos. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprints. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? No, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. No, there aren't. Some little shit and his dad are doing speed. Who fucking who? The stuff's probably from Jamrock. Whatever you've seen is peanuts. Look at the big picture, man. The place is a paradise. And all thanks to Hardy Boys. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is... How dare you? Go fuck yourself. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. My answer is... Fuck off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. Finally, you got something out of him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> go fuck your mom, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? Yeah, by friends. You mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want to beat up his grandma. Nervous snickering. There's a rush of adrenaline present. This is what happens if you take the law into your own hands. Other people start doing it too. Let them come. The hardy boys are right fucking here. You heard the man. Right here. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. And Glenn. Glenn is fucking crazy. Yeah. I will oil it, Murder Machine. The mood is on the rise. They're feeling confident. Ready to punch out the whole Merc platoon. So are the local gangs, the fucking Barmy army, and the Madre scum. You've been out there. Seen any around? Yeah. What are they now, huh? 
sent back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. These people are trained military professionals with decades of combat experience. They are not a gang or a barmy army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. We know more about them than you think. We got weapons of our own. We got Esther 50s, Zilagars. Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. I guess we're gonna see, aren't we? Yeah, like you've been up against ceramic armor. You haven't even seen the whole suit, right? I've seen the whole fucking thing, and it didn't make him immortal. Big fucking surprise. They hire psycho scum arm them to the teeth and let them loose in the city. What do you think is gonna happen? What do you mean, okay? No, they won't. Get out of here with your negative energy. He really doesn't like you ruffling their feathers like that on what might be the eve of battle. All he means is that the situation is serious. No wonder you cops get shot to shit every day. Can't go to war with an attitude like that. As you look around this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco, does this look familiar? Huh? You got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. Speak for yourself, buddy. I've been running this outfit for ten years now. You should have seen Martinez before it started. It was like jam rock now. They didn't see shit, man. Kids getting shot. We had three shootings a week. Fucking graffito everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffito removal. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. Don't let him drink that. One more push, quick. Just don't antagonize him. You have this already. Titus? She stops mid-sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up, but on his terms. You want to talk to her, cop? Fine. I'm gonna let you talk to her, but you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her, a freight train of pain, buddy. What is her name? Glossia, I'm on you. She's staying here at the Whirling in Rags. A real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit, blonde. That's I'm on you. 
with an O. U. Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs? That can't be her. She knows you drank so hard you forgot you were a cop. Oh, it's her! It's definitely her! It's Miss Oranje Disco Dancer! Sure, why not? You've probably seen her around. You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, with your eyes bulging like some wild beast. Your fingers are fidgeting and sweat starts forming on your brow as Titus looks at you oddly. I don't understand what's so cool here. Nothing. We just have a few more questions. Then we'll be on our way. Whatever you do, do not tell him you know her. That would sound off. Remember what I said. Freight train. Of pain. Again? Seriously, man. Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's their relationship. Something is off here. His anger is possessive. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. He did it before we killed him. He's not gonna do it again. So what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. All right. Two weeks, maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. Here you go, boss. I know her. How well do you know her? A small twitch in the corner of Kim's mouth. He has a hunch about what knowing means. Well enough, Copper. We party. She's been here for a few months. You mean Revachol? Nah. Our Miss Aranye disco dancer is an immigrant or a drifter of some sort, been staying over here over the winter. Don't you give her any more trouble. She's just had some bad luck, that's all. Shut up, Angie. She doesn't need your help. Titus gives them both a look. They fall silent. What's with all the silences? It's like these guys don't know how to feel about this. You should keep picking at it. And what was up with the party and she and Titus did. It sounded fun. What do you think I meant? Yeah, pretty much. No, we just fucked. That's all. I'm not gonna give you any details if that's what you're after, so put your dick away. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're gonna get for now. Yeah, whatever. Officer, what was that? Yes. Yes. The victim? Is there something I should know before we talk to her?
Okay, that's manageable. Understood. You were not in good shape on Monday. This is unprofessional. Not sharing information with me is unprofessional. His opinion of you has lowered considerably 